Oh, son, my recent videos have been absolutely dog shit. I sat there last night and I thought to myself, would I watch this shit? Would this be beneficial for my past self when I was 250 pounds, hated my life, and needed this the most? Fuck no. I've been a pussy. I've been trying to see what captures the most. I've been trying to clickbait and this and that. Fuck all that. This going to be my realest video I've made yet since the one about escaping my hell. This will be one of the most important self-improvement videos that you will watch. It's going to save you from so many headaches, and it might give you some real insight. This is one of the most important realizations that I've made in the past three years on this self-improvement shit. So, I'm not going to tell you my whole fucking life story. I'm not going to be like, when I was five years old, I caught a fish. No, fuck that. I'm not, not I ain't here to waste your time. I'm going to tell you about my three years of doing this self-improvement thing. And the most important thing of all these rabbit holes that you'll go down and get overwhelmed by them. And all these contradictions to the things that pull you in this direction and in this direction. The whole mind fucked of the thing. The whole mind fuck of this whole self-improvement shit. Three years ago when I was 250 pounds, COVID had just started. I'd spent the whole beginning bulk of getting off of school and having the extra summer just playing fucking video games, sitting my back hunched like I normally do. I'll do taking bong rip after bong rip all fucking day long. And I went to the summer. I left my where I left my lair, if you will, for the summer. And during that process, it was around July, July of 2020. I got some sort of an inclination to lose weight. I don't know where the fuck it came from, but all of a sudden I was sucked into this rabbit hole of like quick fix ketosis. That was like a big thing back then. Athlean X, how to spot reduce fat. And I was just absorbing this content as much as I could. Eventually, I realized even this, this quick fix spot reduce through sit-ups and all this shit was too hard for me. And I just learned about calories in, calories out. So I realized I should just fucking starve myself, dog. I lost all the muscle and all the fat I had. And I looked skinny in a t-shirt for the first time in my whole teenage life. I had a little bit of confidence. I took that shirt off. I looked like a saggy fucking pear from starving myself with no muscle on the frame. But I had gotten myself down to a pretty good body weight. But along the way, I woke up one morning and I had this... I had all this confidence, all this testosterone because I hit puberty late and shit like that. I, all I wanted to do was fuck. And I lost this weight and got this confidence. And I woke up one morning and I had an autoimmune disorder. It caused abscesses all in my groins. What it is, is I have this thing which if I don't eat right, if I, if I sleep like shit, all sorts of factors, I will flare up and my hair follicles can flare up and get inflamed and turn into like an abscess where the hair... All sorts of just bullshit, painful, all in my inner thighs and groin during this time. And this really, from I went from that fitness rabbit hole of like athlean X and shit like that. I still never touched a weight. To I just went straight deep into the red pill rabbit hole. I mean, I'm talking about, I was watching the big dogs in the red pill all the way to like the 2,000 subscriber channels that would just teach you how to do Tinder and shit. And... This was really one of the most informative times and most interesting times in this whole journey. I had built the complete daily habit of going to the gym. I'd feel sick if I didn't go to the gym. I'd feel bad if I didn't go to the gym. I'd feel bad if I didn't, if I'd eat like a fucking McDonald's or something. I started breaking out of my shell and going out places. I got my first fucking job I'd ever had. I started going out on my own, doing things. I had a car and shit like that now. And... Everything was looking on the up and up, and I just kept digesting this red pill content. I still was a 17-year-old virgin that had never got any pussy before, and that was the main thing on my mind at this point. But the two combinations of me still not having my ideal body and this fucking autoimmune disorder made it almost impossible for me to talk to women. So every I'd watch all these guides on how to talk to women and shit like that, and it culminated into me building like one of the best fucking Tinder profiles I'd ever seen at that point. I was studying this shit like it was the fucking ASVAB test for the military or something, dog. I was going ham. And a couple other things that happened during this time that kind of made me stop giving a fuck and being so insecure. I accidentally shot myself. And I had a couple other things like that happen. And eventually it led to I lost my virginity. And I realized, holy shit, this is exciting and shit. So I went along and I had... I, 
I just started fucking abusing Tinder. I would go on there and just meet up with all these different women and shit like that. And I got my, I got my body count up to like 10 from zero to like 10 in a three month period. And I had felt on top of the fucking world and all of this shit. I was super confident at the time. I was bragging to everybody. I thought I was like the pussy master or something. And this was a deep red pill, this was a deep rabbit hole I was in. I was just, I wasn't getting, I wasn't doing this for a girlfriend. It was almost like a form of payback for me. I had never got, I had gotten ignored my whole life. I would just fuck these hoes and then block them. It all led up to one specific moment. I went through a month where I was like in complete monk mode as you would call it. I had no, no drinking, no weed, no porn. And I was just slinging dick. And I'm, I went on Tinder one day. I had my game down to a point. I had, I was playing this shit like a video game. My Tinder profile pictures, I'd watched all these guides and everything and dialed it into a fucking T. I had this copy-paste formula that I would get their fucking Instagrams quick as shit. And it led to this one specific night. I messaged this bitch on Tinder. I do my copy-paste. And within three messages or so, I get her Instagram. And within four more messages on Instagram, I set up a meet with... I'm going to meet her in like three or four days from this. This was probably around November-ish of 2021. And I felt on top of the world. It was like she lives like 10 minutes away. I get over there, pick her up. I don't want to hear a thing this bitch is saying because she's annoying the shit out of me. And we get to the theater. I get out of there. I'm like a pimp at this point. I just grab her hand, walk in there, pay for that shit. And it was the movie Antlers. We sit down in the theater with only two other people in it. And within... 15 minutes into the movie, we just start going at it. I'm fingering the shit out of her. She's sucking my dick, yada, yada. I, at this point, I had this Tahoe, and I, this Tahoe was famous <laughs> in my own mind. I called this son of a bitch the shag wagon, and I, would, I had a blanket in the back, and it was kind of like set up like a bed, and I would just take all the women I met off of Tinder back there because I didn't want to take them to my house because I was self-conscious. I was broke as shit, and my house was a fucking disaster where I grew up in. I give her the signal, we stop doing it, we go and we sit in the front of the Tahoe, make out for a minute, and I'm like, let's hop in the back. Now, this is really what took me out of the red pill rabbit hole. This was something that really crumbled my whole existence up until that point. Now, for the last three months of this time, my whole life evolved around meeting women off of Tinder, sleeping with them for some sort of validation, and it was exciting. But this night was complete work. I remember we switched like positions three or four times. I had a hard time keeping my dick hard. I was just completely not into it. My mind was completely on something else, not really on anything else. More of, I didn't, I didn't have no connection with her at all. I'm just sitting there pumping for the feel of it, and I wasn't feeling shit. Now, I ain't stupid. I ain't about to have no abortion, no kids. So all these bitches, I was pretty much fucking with a condom. And maybe that had something to do with it. But I was just, I went to town on this bitch for like 40 minutes and still could not bust. I mean, she's sitting there scratching me, all sorts of shit. And it's in the parking lot of this movie theater. And I'm just like, what the fuck am I doing? I started like having like an existential crisis while I'm fucking this bitch. And it all culminates to like five minutes of me just going as fast as I can to get my nut off. I finally do. I'm a, I want to take her home immediately and just go home. And she's like, oh, I want to see the ocean. We live by the Gulf Coast. It's five minutes down the street. She's like, oh, I don't want to go home yet. Like most of the bitches off Tinder do that you don't want to talk to. And I get drug into going around and fucking spending another hour down there at this place where the movie theater was just looking at the water it's cold as shit outside it's november then after that i take her home i go get pick up my boy we eat some fucking denny's and i crash next day i'm at the gym working out now during this three month period of me just fucking hose i had no job I, i'd moved back down there from working construction up at this in the summer and i was just living off my savings and i was living stupid i would go to dillard's and buy like 200 hundred dollar suit jackets and just stupid ass shit from things that influenced me in this red pill ideology shit and one of the biggest things that it, and during this time i felt so good and whatnot and she messaged me the next day and this was she was a nice fucking girl i mean she offered to pay at the movie theater and all sorts of shit and she was like actually interested in all sorts of things it wasn't just like a quick hookup and she was trying to prolong it and I just blocked her the next day at the gym when she texted me. And then after this, 
I kind of felt, I still felt kind of cool. I had like this cool story of a super easy lay, fucking her in the movie theater, whatnot. And I had this high body count and I felt real cool. But then everything I had believed in, all this validation seeking to women and whatnot, had just crumbled. What the, I uh, just like, what the fuck is the point of this shit? Realistically at the time, I had taken a lot of things at face value. A lot of this red pill shit, yeah, there were contradictions in it that I heard that I kind of agreed with, but for the most part, I took it at face value. I felt like a fucking loser, and I kind of wanted redemption, if you would call it, by pleasing my, thinking I was enough, by sleeping with a bunch of women so I could feel like I was enough, even though that would not, that was not what was going to help me along the whole time. But at the time, I was completely fucking lost, and this really started my spiral. Now don't, don't get it confused. I didn't turn into no fucking fag. I was still slinging dick around, but this really started making me question things. This was towards the end of 2021, and the day after Christmas of 2021, my car got stolen. Come out of work at like 11 o'clock at night, I was a waiter making like $250 a night. I was, I was fucking a big shot right out of high school, 18 years old. I felt like the fucking shit. And it all got taken away from me. For the next month, all the way until February, I just hung around the house watching movies. I went into like a depression. I didn't want to do jack fucking shit. I, my grandpa was down there for Christmas. I came back up there to him. It took me two more months. I did end up getting my car back. But for two fucking months, I went into like a complete depression. I didn't want to do shit. I was just living off the money I made as a waiter. I was just complete degeneracy. Started working construction once I got my car back. I'd still never really recovered from them two months of just being a pussy. And this led to a full year of me. I was going on this upward trajectory. I'd broken out of my shell. Yes, it was a lot of hedonistic shit, like sleeping with women and stuff like that. But realistically, I was on an upward trajectory. I was going out and doing things. And then this just shut me off. I was working this job that I, at the time, I didn't really like. Like four or five months after my car was stolen and I got it back, I got evicted from my house and had to move two hours away from all my friends, everyone I knew, to a town where I barely spent uh, four, more than four or five days in. And I'm living in this back room with like eight people in this house. My family, it's only like three bedrooms. It's cramped as fuck. People are sleeping on the couch and shit. And this is truly where I started to get depressed. I would cope, I found hobbies and shit like that, like I went this music route, I started going down all this, this rabbit hole of like quick fixes of, of money, I started making fucking beats, thinking I was going to be Kanye West, and then eventually after a month of living here with no job, I got a job working at a Subway. Now while I'm working at Subway, four main things happen. This was like a month long, this was like almost a month and a half, two months that I worked this job. And the first thing that happened was I gave up on all the music shit and I started getting this aspiration to start making these videos helping people. Now this is a complete year ago from now. Second thing happens, I'm still fucking a loser. I still hadn't really had sex in like since I moved. I was just fucking depressed as shit. I was had no friends, nothing like that. All the people in my job I hated. Still going to the gym and all that shit. Doing them type of habits and stuff like that watching videos and red pill and shit and it i started watching sneeko and shit like that i'd watch his streams with an airpod in my ear and i was really nihilistic about the world at this point and after a month or two of working there i slept i finally met a girl there that worked the register i fucked her then like two days later my car i was about to leave for work and my battery died i needed a new battery i just quit my fucking job on the spot blocked that bitch and then went on to the most degenerate phases, phase of, of this whole self-improvement journey. After Subway, after blocking her, I went complete loner mode. My parents, I used the excuse that the job and the people were mean. I played victim and whatnot. And I, I fell super deep into this like philosophy route. I was trying to find the meaning of life and all this shit. Working... At working as a DoorDash delivery driver, making like $25 a fucking day, sleeping in my car some nights, just completely fucking out of it. There was no point. I still go to the gym. Like I still had some level of discipline, but I was just completely fucking lost. 
And I went about this from about like August, September, September, November, all the way until February of this year, where all of a sudden again, I get in a fucking car crash, same goddamn car, it totals the car out, and then I'm just stuck with fucking absolute nothing. I could at least get out of the house and be a loser. I did all that shit at Subway, all that shit with DoorDash. During the DoorDash months, I drank seven handles of alcohol. I was a complete alcoholic. I had this, like, dream fantasy. I'd just spend all day laying around watching fucking movies in the place I was living by myself. I was just a complete fucking degenerate. I was watching Sneeko and Destiny and all these people talk about ideologies and the red pill and nihilism and philosophy. And I was down this, like, fucking weird, like parasocial rabbit hole where I was just like constantly feeding noise. I couldn't brush my teeth or anything without watching some sort of a clip from one of these streamers that I liked. I went through two months where I started playing video games again and I was really just in like the worst point in these three years of self-improvement. And then all that culminated to me getting in a car crash working DoorDash one night. It was sometime in January. It was sometime in January. Pulled out of a neighborhood and a bitch T-boned me and completely totaled my car. Fucked her car all the way up. Tahoe on Tahoe. She was in a Tahoe. I was in a Tahoe. Completely smashed in the door I was sitting. Almost fucking killed me. I got so lucky I escaped without a crash. Without a scratch. That shit was all crumbled in on, si on top of me. I had to crawl through the back of the Tahoe. And then I went and got depressed again for two months. And my grandpa came down and picked me up. He picked me up and then I moved back to where I'm at. And now... After all that bullshit in two years, I'm in the most I'm in the most happy state of mind I've ever been in. I have a sense of ambition like I've never had before. The biggest takeaway from this whole period of my life that I can remember is the thing I spent most of my time doing. It wasn't the fucking, it wasn't the doing subway, it wasn't trying to make music in this bedroom, in this house with eight other people living in it. It wasn't living on my own, being an alcoholic, wanting to be a movie director. It wasn't starting these YouTube videos. It was all these little rabbit holes that I would fall in online. I don't know if this shit is just because of like the new age of this. It's almost like a dystopian experiment where we're raised online. We have we constantly get our gratification and our information and entertainment all offline. And there's constant things pulling you this way, pulling you this, pulling you one way and pulling you up the other. It's like a constant war in your fucking mind. And for me, there was a multitude of rabbit holes. I've been red pilled, I've been blue pilled, I've been all this within these three years. And most recently I even fell down this like new new age carnivore rabbit hole, which you get, they all get overwhelming. That's the main thing about these rabbit holes is they get so overwhelming. With the red pill, it starts off sweet and friendly. You, you have this key to get some pussy that you never got in your life. And then they start saying, oh, you got to talk to women this way. You got to do this. You got to dress this way. You got to do this tender, this, this, this. There's all these parameters. With the fitness thing, there's all this spot reduced fat, all these fake natural people who make you jealous and all this. And it's overwhelming. And with the newest one... It's like this holistic carnivore lifestyle of like eat beef, cheese, butter, all these different Jordan Peterson, Joe Rogan, Paul Saladino, all these figures online promote it. And then I fell down this rabbit hole recently, even in the best mental state I've ever been in, where it's like, oh, the way to cure your acne, because I got some acne on my face, is use beef tallow. But I work a general construction job building houses all day. I run four miles a day and get a full workout in, constantly sweating. And you can't just put fucking butter on your face if you're sweating all day. So then I broke out into acne again, and I haven't had an acne breakout or an autoimmune disorder breakout in over, like, six months. So that fucked me up a little bit. But it's all these different rabbit holes that you pull yourself out of and you kind of cherry pick from them. There's good things that I learned from the red pill. There is good things that I learned from the fitness thing. There is good things I learned from the Matrix the Matrix route. There's good thing the Matrix Sneeko, Destiny, all that Andrew Tate route. There's good things that I learned from this carnivore diet route. The carnivore eating meat and whole foods have completely changed my autoimmune disorder and I monitor it and I'm able to live life without flare-ups all the time. You need to take the good shit out of these mindsets and rabbit holes we'll have as young men because we are impressionable as fuck. Like I said, things will pull you in this direction and the other and as long as you can separate 
the bad and from the good and form your opinion as a sovereign individual that is what masculinity is is not completely aligning yourself with one path but forming your opinions from all these different separate paths this message that i'm telling you alone has created the best mental health i've ever had i went down the Gog david goggins rabbit hole recently and it's made me able to accept and speak to possibly millions about my autoimmune disorder my troubles with women all of these things i mean i didn't talk about on the rest of my youtube videos uh, I didn't talk about a lot of the shit I talk about on my older YouTube videos because I didn't want my real life friends to think I was lame. But for a whole fucking year, I was. From February to February, I was a lame motherfucker in 2022. I mean, I'm finally free and I can talk about it and possibly share this message to millions of people and it doesn't bother, bother me because I'm finally free. These rabbit holes, these rabbit holes, like I said, can sometimes be inex inescapable these days with all the media pouring into your ears. And if you're choosing the route of not being like a dopamine detox person where you ignore all the social media and you're going to use it as a tool, you need to you need to be very strict with what you watch online and you need to be very careful. As long as you keep a solid line of parameters that you will not break, and will not let these rabbit holes sway your opinion one way to another, you can keep your sanity. You will be okay. Take the meat and leave the bones. Some of my parameters that I've not let break this whole time are, first, my belief in God. Andrew Tate became a Muslim, and I thought I wanted to be a Muslim. Then I see this John Zerka dude, and I want to be a Christian again. I went through the Christian rabbit hole when I was over there uh, doing Subway and shit like that. Then I want to be... I want. I get pulled all these ways, but my belief, be it a Muslim, Islam God, or a fucking Christian God, I believe in one true power that created the universe, and that type of shit. And that belief has kept me sane with a lot of things. The second biggest parameter that I have is my dreams and ambitions. I have a Genghis Khan sense of ambition of shit that I want to accomplish in this fucking life. I can't subdue it. I can't stop it. It's just how it is. All the little schemes along the way, the red pill scheme, before I started fucking a bunch of women, the main thing I wanted to do was inspire millions of men, but I didn't think I had the credentials to do it, so I went along trying to do this hedonistic bullshit. Whenever my car got, whenever I moved to, uh, where I, whenever I did the subway shit and moved from all my friends and I started making these beats, I stopped making the beats and started and remembered my original dream, which was making these YouTube videos. When making these YouTube videos are just content online in general to inspire millions of men. Uh, whenever I moved over here, I started doing a bunch of oil paintings and falling back into my guitar playing and shit. And I had this dream that I was going to make like music videos of covers to songs with an acoustic guitar. I could still do that, but realistically, ever since I've been like, 15 years old, even when I was a fat fucking video game player, the men that I've been, the men I've been, I've always respected the most are the ones who go out in the world, they learn things, and then they come back and share it to other people. The third parameter that I will not break during this is my knowledge of how important hard work is. Back in 2021, towards the end of 2021, after I'd spent so long, I'd lost most of my weight, I'd gotten into the gym and shit like that, been shot myself, fucking discovered enough of the red pill that I decided, all right, it's time to go start fucking some hoes and shit like that off of Tinder. I worked a job later on, it was just like around September-ish, like August, September of 2021 for my uncle doing construction. It was the hardest fucking job because before this, right after I graduated, my first fucking job was working at Kona Ice for $11 an hour serving snow cones. I felt like a fucking loser doing this job. Yeah, it was nice. I could smoke a dab pen and go 100 miles per hour down a freeway in a Kona Ice truck with my friends right out of high school. It was real exciting, but it didn't give me pride in what I was doing. Whenever I'm doing this construction job, I'm doing a con I'm work construction now. I'm a lot more skilled and I do a lot more specific things. Back then I was just pouring concrete and shit like that. It gave me the first taste of being prideful in your work. Whenever you work hard for something, be it a fucking, be it making a bunch of YouTube videos or something that's really uh, thought invoking, editing videos real skillfully, 
This sense of working hard for something you true be truly believe in will give you a confidence and a pride in yourself that nothing else will. I truly think it was this confidence and working hard in construction. It could have been something else, but construction made me work hard. It was what gave me the spark to just go off and start fucking women like I wanted to. I don't really want to do that now because it's hedonistic right now. I'd like a good bitch that would settle down and have a lot of traditional values. That's kind of where I am now. Back then, it was all about just how many fucking people I could sleep with. That was really my ultimate goal. But it gave me that spark and confidence to go after that goal. Even if I don't believe in that goal now, that hardworking pridefulness, confidence in myself is what gave me that. I've been down the Goggins rabbit hole recently, and this is something he preaches too, is to have pride in yourself through working hard and suffering. We suffer a lot in life, and the only true way to have some sense of being ready for the next suffering to come along is to learn about yourself through suffering. Now, after this job, I worked as a waiter, real easy, made a lot of money, but I didn't have the pride. After that, I worked a six month stint doing putting roofs on fucking houses in hot ass summer. That was a very, very, I learned a lot of lessons from that job. And that was another time where I was very, very prideful in my work. There was no anxiety of going outside. There wasn't no hard talking to women. I could do anything I wanted. I was a loser at that time because I was depressed from my car being stolen and shit. But it's still, I still had that sense of pride during it. Now my third thing, no, now my fourth parameter, it's a little hit, come and go because it kind of changes sometimes, which I know it shouldn't with my with what I'm saying, but is my philosophy and my morals. I'm still developing, I'm still very subjective to all the things I'm saying because I'm young and impressionable. I still, my views will sway from one way to another, but a lot of the things stay the same, like my morals. I'm very traditional I have very traditional masculine morals with what I believe, what I want in a relationship, what I want out of life. This can come from the religion I believe in, this can come from the people I surround myself, so and so forth. And then onto the philosophy, like I said, this is just what I believe all this life is about. Truly, I believe in God, but it's always fun to theorize and have certain philosophies. I read Nietzsche and them other fucking philosophers and shit like that. It's just a fun little thing. But anyway, this video is getting really fucking long. The main thing I want to leave you with is two things. The first is the synopsis of this whole video, and the second is a quote that you might find cringy, you might find gay, but it's something from Nietzsche that I found to be very, uh, very thought-provoking, if you will. The first thing is the synopsis. Taking the meat and leaving the bones through all of these fucking avenues and pills and and rabbit holes you'll be swallowed through because we do live in this dystopian social media experiment. If you're like under the age of 25, 28, you've been grown up with all these different ideas coming into you different ways, contradictory opinions online. And the only way is to not be completely sucked in. Take the meat and leave the bones from certain of them, which means just as simply as... Take the shit you find information, take the information you find really good and useful and leave the bad shit that you don't really see serving you positively in any way. And that is the key to being a unique and sovereign masculine man. That's where masculinity comes in at. It's not beating your fucking chest and shit like that. It is being a true, being yourself truly all the way through. Now the quote I want to leave you with is about purpose and chasing your dreams. It's from Nietzsche. I know of no greater life purpose than to perish attempting the great and impossible. The fact that something seems impossible should not be the reason to not pursue it. That's exactly what makes it worth pursuing. Where would the courage and greatness be if success was certain and there was no risk? The only true failure is shrinking away from life's challenges. Old son, chase paper and enjoy nature. Have a great day. All my videos from here on out are going to be more meaningful. I might do a couple to see what works, but for the most part, I'm not going to just half-assedly record something so I get a video in a day. I got to be consistent and get my daily video in. Fuck all that shit. From now on, I'm going to try to help you the best way I can and go from the route of what I would want to hear whenever I was younger. Have a great day.